So good afternoon and welcome to Kitty Talks. Today I have with me a very, very good friend of mine, the beautiful, the wonderful Monique Blocks. Hello, Monique. Hi, Kitty. So great to be here with you. Oh, Monique, I'm so excited to have you on the show today. Um, for those of you that don't know, Monique is the founder of Business Launch Portal. So she supports startup entrepreneurs to basically take their ideas, scale them into a rocket, rocketable enterprise. Um, Monique is an international speaker, she's a trainer, she's a coach, and she's a published author. And I'm also privileged to call her one of my very good friends. So Monique, welcome. Oh, it's so wonderful to be here with you, Kitty. It's amazing. I love these Kitty talks. I'm such a big fan of yours. <laughs> Well, the idea, as you know, Monique, of Kitty Talks is to share inspirational people like yourselves' life stories, because the people out there sitting and watching, you know, how on earth did you get to where you are today? So I'd love to hear a little bit more about you and what you do, what you're doing in the world. Great. I'm happy to, uh, to share anything you want to know, Kitty, and everyone that, you know, is so watching us right now, you know, whatever is inspirational to them and to encourage them to really step up and make their dreams come true. So it's great to be with you, Kitty. And, you know, it's, it's my honor and pleasure to have every single one that's, uh, that's watching us today. So I'm really glad to be here. So who am I and uh, what do I do? Well, um, what, you know, you should know about Monique is that, you know, I have pretty much like three passions in my life, right? One is entrepreneurship, one is speaking, and one is my husband. Aww. Okay, not in that order, of course. Okay, so I'm sure my husband is going <laughs> to be at some point. So, of course, he always comes first, right? But he's not a woman I make money with, obviously, uh, although he's earning very well. But, uh, you know, coming back to the first two, um, you know, I'm, I'm always trying to combine my passions. The things that I care about, the things that you know really drive me in life, and that is entrepreneurship and uh, and speaking. And uh, you know, entrepreneurship. Well, you know, it's it's not always been that way, but you know, I've been going through the corporate world, and I tell you about my story a little more uh, later on. But I've been going through the corporate world for 15 years, and I felt more and more that I was the right fish, but in the wrong pond. Okay. But, you know, it was great to make billions for a big business. You know, it felt a little bit like I was an entrepreneur in a big business, but then organizations changed all the time and more and more, I just realized that, you know, I, I'm not really living my purpose. I'm not really living my passion. And, uh, you know, I felt more and more like the right fish, but in the wrong pond. And I said, what do I want to do with the rest of my life? You know, do I really want to make billions for a big business? Is that my purpose? Is that what drives me? Is that the meaning of my life? And I realized more and more, no, it's not. So, you know, eventually I, you know, started a business and I would like to start with a bit of failure story, Kitty, because I sure. think you learn the most from failure, right? Yeah, absolutely. So I stepped out of the corporate world um, pretty much, I think it was the 17th of September, 2010. And for the first time of my life, I had the feeling again that I was on the right path, that I was holding my destiny in my both hands and I was really doing what I wanted to do with my life. Although I just had no clue what I wanted to do, the only thing I knew was I wanted to start a business. And then there, were, there was a friend of mine that said, hey, if you're just starting a business, why don't you join us? And as at that time, I didn't really know much about what did I want to do. Or the only thing I knew was I wanted to start a business. I want to learn how to start something from scratch, right? And uh, there was this friend and he said, you're starting a business. Why don't you come along? And uh, we built a business where we helped, you know, organizations, especially even big corporates, we helped them to, you know, to measure their return on investment for training. So what we did is, we work with organizations um, to make sure that when people get trained, they're not only getting smarter, they're not only learning something, but they're also applying what they're learning in their job. So it's not so important what this business was about, but we started to run some pilot projects with some big companies because I was well uh, connected with some, some, some business leaders and big corporates coming from the corporate world. 
and uh, you know and still none of these projects took off really and i have to admit that even though in this business in the startup we were we were six very smart business leaders right i mean i'd been in business for 15 years right i mean i i knew how business works that's what i thought i uh, you know i had uh, you know built rebuild teams i had a big network of people all over the globe most of them being employed okay <laughs> so if you want to start a business surround yourself with other entrepreneurs so you know one and a half years after starting this first business I had to admit that I'd burned 18 months of my life and about 60,000 euros. Wow. Which is not much in the startup world, but which is a lot on your private bank account, right? Yeah. And I realized it's not working. And, uh, you know, I realized that, hey, I need to do something else. But today I say every minute I spent back then and every cent I spent was worth it because Shockingly today, I say I learned it 10,000 ways of how not to do it. <laughs> yes. And the more you learn about what not to do, how not to deal with partners, how not to deal with clients, you know, the, the more you learn about what you should do. So, you know, that is my little, my first startup was a failure story, like for so many entrepreneurs it is, right? And what age was that, Monique? How long ago was that? How old were you? Uh, that, that's about four or five years ago. Okay. Yeah. Um, it, it's yeah closer to five by now and uh, you know and when I came out of that I really asked myself I doubted myself I thought well I wanted to learn how to start a business I thought I was business smart I thought I had a big network and here I am back to point zero so I asked myself do I go back in a job or do I really want to learn how to start a business and the good news is that in my corporate job, I'd made so much money. So I still had a couple of years ahead that I didn't need to work. Wow. So I said, well, why don't I give it another try? Okay. Very brave. And, yeah, I was very brave, right? And, uh, you know, and, and still, that's the thing. You know, I know, Kitty, you are like that. I know you've gone through some hard times. But again, you know, when we go through hard times, we need to ask ourselves, what do we really want and why do we want it and what's really driving us inside, right? So I said, hey, no, I want to learn how to take what is really meaningful to you and build a business around it that you can not only sustain yourself, but live well with it and really make a bigger difference out there. So I really was committed to learn that. <clears throat> And then a friend of mine um, connected me with a lady in the U.S. And uh, she was a successful entrepreneur. And more importantly, she had a lot of people around her that were successful entrepreneurs. And she introduced me into her world. And uh, that was as if someone would tell you, Monique, there's theaters in this world. Most people that introduce you to a theater, they buy your ticket, they go to a show with you and say, hey, watch the show. But when you have a mentor, she took me right behind the curtain. Oh, wow. But it was like I was being entering into the world of personal development, mentoring, coaching, and, you know, entrepreneurship, where she really connected with me with those guys. And I started to do back then already five years ago, um, you know, I started to do what you do now, Kitty. I interviewed successful mm -hmm. So, you know, within five, six months, I had like 20,000 listeners, right? Wow. Um, and today we have listeners in more than 60 countries. And, uh, you know, and, and by interviewing successful entrepreneurs, I started to connect with them on a personal level. And I started to get to know them. I started to run projects with them. I learned from them. I took their wisdom and shared, started to share it with people. And that was then the kickoff of, you know, the business launch portal. So what I realized was also, you know, I said, hey, you know, I really want to learn how to start a business. So I started to really look into all kinds of startup platforms around the globe, all kinds of entrepreneurship platforms around the globe. And I started to collaborate with them. So they started to hire me as a coach and mentor. And I really started to look at what they do and how do they do things. And I came across four limitations that when you want to start a business or build some a scalable business, go from being a solopreneur to really starting a scalable business where you're not just selling your time, but where you have a team around you, where you start selling, you make, uh, generating passive income, 
where you're making money while you're not working with clients, Brilliant. And a scalable business, you know, that is, that, that is quite challenging and you need a lot of support along the way. And what I realized is that most of these startup platforms and entrepreneurship uh, platforms and even startup and entrepreneurship programs, even at elite universities, they had four limitations. I felt that they were, first of all, only working with a very limited number of people. So, you know, and I'm, I'm regularly like a, like a startup mentor or even a pitch mentor to at startup competitions where people get together and then you have sometimes hundreds or thousands of teams applying for some startup, you know, support and mentor and funding. And then, you know, out of the hundreds or thousands, there's maybe 50 selected or 10 or five or sometimes only one entrepreneur or team that get, then gets pampered. They get mentors, they get courses, they get an office space, uh, often they get money. But again, you know, there's only very few that gain that support. And I started to ask myself, what about the other hundreds or thousands that don't get any support at all? So that was the first thing I realized. I, I saw that there's not enough people supported. Second, I realized that you know, um, all, the, all the startup weekends or startup weeks or, you know, all these courses and programs are not long enough. They're often like one day or two days or sometimes an evening uh, or, you know, just a couple of days, like often these startup weekends or weeks, but you're not building a, a business in two days. You're not building a business in, in a week, right? So, you know, I realized that, hey, when you want to help people to either start a business or scale their business, you need to work with them over a longer period of time. Mm. That was the second thing I, I realized. So too few people supported, too time limited. And then I started to look into what do people train? Okay, well, what kind of training do startup entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs get? And I looked into programs from elite universities that often these programs were very close to MBAs, you know, um, Master of Business Administration programs, and all of these programs are amazing if you want to become an executive in a big business. But not practical. You a marketing specialist or a finance specialist or an HR specialist, but they're not really teaching you how to start a business. Yeah. Because most of these programs end with writing a business plan. But writing a plan is just the very beginning of starting a business. Right? So, so would you say, because I'm just kind of listening to your journey through sure. entrepreneurship, and sure. obviously for people listening who don't necessarily know what they want to do, like, like yeah. it sounds that you didn't necessarily know what, it, what you wanted to do. No, yeah. Is it fair to say that you kind of got conscious of the fact that you wanted to have your own business and then these things started to show up? Very true, very true. I, I love your question, Kitty, because a lot of people that say, I love to start my business, but I don't know what I want to do. So, you know, for me also, it was a long process, you know, um, uh, it was a long process where, you know, for year, even for years before I started this first business or before I even had the courage to step out, accepting that I, I didn't know yet what kind of business I wanted to start. That's pretty but big. I, it's very big. And to be honest, Kitty, that's not the way I recommend anyone, okay? Because it's definitely, <laughs> I can tell you, okay? Yeah. You can do it if you have a big financial buffer, as I did. Sure. Okay? So I said, hey, I have nothing to lose. There's a couple of years that I have. I can experiment, I can learn, and I can continue to make money if I want it, okay? Um, the thing is, to be honest, I, even in the first year I've, after I stepped out, I got very nervous financially. Mm. I had been used to make quite a good money every single month. And it drops in your bank account. <laughs> went down to zero. Yeah. Okay? And then like three, four, five months down the line, I was already starting to feel nervous. Even though I still had a big financial buffer, you know, going from a quite high salary, okay, like a six-digit figure every year, okay, to zero was pretty scary. Yeah, of course. So what I did is after, after five, six months down the line, a friend of mine said, hey, Monique, why don't you come on board? We are running a project in a, big, in a big business. We hire you as a consultant. You work with us like two, maximum three days a week. 
I said, yeah, if it's only two days a week, okay, I can do that because that would give me a lot of money, okay? So um, I stepped into this project, but to be honest, it was something I chosen out of fear. Right, oh, I see. Well, the project then. was horrible. I was not the perfect person to be in that project. I wasn't really contributing in the way I wanted. They started to suck me in. So I had said at the beginning, I only do it if it's two days a week because I still want to build my business. And then it became three, sometimes four days a week. Right. And I didn't really have time for my business anymore at all. Sure. The good news is I kept doing that for three months. And then I said, no, this is not going to work. I step out again. I'd realized that I'd stepped into it out of fear. The good news is in these three months, I made so much money I could survive another six months again, okay? However, you know, and I do understand why people look for side jobs while they're building their business or why they're not stepping out, which is a smart thing. If you don't have a strong financial buffer, you need to make sure you still have money in the bank to keep you alive for some time. Yeah, absolutely. Because building a business takes longer than you expect. They say, counting double or triple the time than you think at the beginning that you think between you know in terms of time frame of you know stepping out and starting to make money it takes double or triple the time than what you expect at the beginning okay mm -hmm. um there were two things i still quickly wanted to say on what i realized what the gaps were in the startup world um so you know so the second one as i said was that um people get you know, uh, not, not enough people were supported, um, not too long. And the third thing was the most startup programs were too theoretical. And the fourth limitation I saw was that, you know, most startup platforms are too local. Every bigger city has startup platforms, okay? But often these platforms, unless you're Silicon Valley and everyone wants to connect you with, wants to connect with Silicon Valley, but all the others are not really exchanging, which means that, um, you know, if you don't find a mentor or if you don't find a co-founder or a supporter, go beyond where you are at this point. So, you know, and that is why, just to summarize why I started the business launch portal is because I realized it takes longer to start a business. Yeah. It's very scary, right? You often don't get a chance to get support from a startup platform. You know, you might need support on it or you will need support on a daily basis. And you want to also go through the journey being guided step by step. As my mentor did with me. She took me by the hand and did guide me through the process step by step. She said, so many, if you want to start your business, you need to do first this, second this, third this. Yeah. Now let's get it done together. Yeah. This was such incredible help for me. Well, you don't get taught at school, do you, how to set up a business? No, there, there is no school. There is a street smart school. And that is what we created. So this is why we created the business launch portal. Because we realized that people need this. You know, we want to support as many people out there, thousands, millions of people out there, right? To really be courageous to step up for the dream that they have. We want to guide them step by step over at least six months. A lot of them we work with for over years. And we want to guide them in a very practical way. We're not going to get them to sit down and write a business plan. We help them to craft a business concept, but by going out there into the market and to speak with potential clients pretty much from day one. Mm. To build a concrete product so that they start making money within three to six months. Or if they are solopreneurs and they really want to build a scalable business, we help them develop products and services that they can also make money while they're not spending time with their clients. Okay. But I'm going to say more about the program later on. Yeah. And how did you know, like, that you got it? Like, how, when was that moment that you thought, yes, I found it. I found what I'm supposed to be doing. You know what? I don't know what it was for you, Kitty, but it was when I found my first client, my first happily paying client. Yeah. I remember that the first time someone signed up to one of my programs and put quite some money down the table for that one, I was, I was, you know, jumping out of my shoes, to be honest. You know, I was running over. I said, hey, I got my first client. So, of course, with the first client, you don't know. It, it's, it's not a breakthrough. Okay, so there were so many moments when I knew, okay, now I'm on the right path. 
So, you know, when I found my first client, I had con confirmation that what I was offering was worth it. Okay. Then when I had more and more people joining our programs and realizing that in the startup world, the success rate is less than 10%. So wow. less than 10% of people that are actually starting a business go beyond the third year. Okay. So I can, I'm so proud to say that people that come onto our programs, more than 50% start making money within three to six months. Mm -hmm. Last four years, we only had two people that went back to a job from mm -hmm. all the people we worked with. Wow. Okay. Everyone else is still running a business, not necessarily what they wanted to start with, but they're still running their business. They're still yeah. growing. Okay. Which is incredible. I find it an incredible success. Yeah. Okay? Nice. Also, then when I started to get invited by some pretty big startup, uh, startup platforms, like already in my second year, I was invited by Malaysia. Um, you know, they have uh, Startup Malaysia as a platform. And, you know, there was a global entrepreneurship summit in 2013, I think it was. And they invited me to be you know, in two different ways. They invited me to work with one of their teams, you know, being a, a, a startup mentor for one of their teams. Um, and with their team, by the way, you know, later on, I went to Malaysia because I was invited to, to be a speaker at a big event. Um, and, uh, you know, and that team we worked with, within just three months that we worked with them, they ensured that they raised their revenue by 50% that year. And again, a 50% a year after. And when they started, they already had a team of close to 30 people. Mm. And then, you know, while I was over there, there was like the, the celebration ceremony. And then one of the Malaysian ministers gave me a big, uh, you know, a big golden frame thanking me for all the work we've done. It's a moment like that, that you realize that your, your work is worth something. Wow. Right? And you literally kind of carved that out of nothing, really, didn't you? There was yeah, nothing there to out of nothing. With. Out of nothing. And also that year, uh, while I was in Malaysia, the Global Entrepreneurship Summit took place, which is also supported and sponsored by Obama. And every year, Malaysia decides to actually help 5,000 entrepreneurs a year to get started. And they had a kickoff event there, aligned with the Global Entrepreneurship Summit. Right. So, you know, on that, uh, on that event, Obama was supposed to, to speak on that event. You know, unfortunately, it wasn't the year when in October or in, in autumn, he had household issues, so he couldn't come okay. over. So he sent John Kerry. Otherwise, today, I could proudly say, hey, I would have shared the stage with Obama. Wow. But now, I only shared it with John Kerry, the previous foreign minister, and the Malaysian prime minister. So, you know, it's people like that that I shared the stage with. Fantastic. Back to my speaking power, okay. As I said, I love speaking, and you know, even though I've been speaking since like 20 years, I feel that if you speak when you're employed and you speak it about a technical aspect, like I spoke about marketing and pricing management before, and now you know, when I stepped out 2010, 2011, I decided I want to go back onto stage to present to present and share my experience, my story. Um, and I want to speak about things that are really important to me. And, uh, you know, and when I set that intention, again, I started with zero with my speaking, right? I mean, I had a little bit of speaking experience. But you know it, when you step up on stage and you're often a great, powerful speaker yourself, but when you step up on stage and you speak your heart out, yes, from you your heart, speak about what you really care about, it's an entirely different way of speaking. Mm. So after I built my business, I felt like I was starting out as a speaker from scratch, because now I was sharing my own stories and I was showing myself being vulnerable. Mm. And uh, you know, and uh, I said, hey, now I really want to, you know, conquer the, the, the big world stages, international stages myself again. Mm -hmm. And I thought, hey, while you do that, it's again good to have someone that has done it already. So I really started to interview very successful speakers on how they built their speaker business. And, yeah. then, and, and then, you know, I asked them for advice and I built a community around that of people that also wanted to become professional speakers like myself. Mm. So, you know, to, to learn from people that have done it and bring others along that want to learn it like you was a powerful combination. 
Fantastic. And once I did that, another platform started to evolve, which is today called my speaker business platform that has grown into a community of 600 professional speakers or people that want to become professional wow. speakers. And, uh, you know, and we interviewed more than 35 top speakers on the planet. Yeah. The book is going to come out next year. And among the 35, we interviewed, I think, seven or eight world championship winners of speakers. So we really have top profile speakers there that can tell you how, how to build a speaker business successfully. Wow. So, you know, and while I did that, um, we had, that's been a project that we've been working on already over the last three years. So more than a hundred people contributed to it. None of them was paid. It was all voluntary and the result is amazing. And, uh, you know, along the way, I got back onto stages. I got invited again as a speaker. So, you know, I've been speaking, you know, um, you know, to audiences as small, as small as five people up to three and a half thousand, you know, wow. just, uh, two weeks ago, I was in Boston at the inbound stage, giving a 45 minute presentation on how to pitch, how to convince anyone of anything almost every time there were 500 people in the audience. Right. I've been speaking in the European Parliament, in, in the center of the heart of Europe. I've been speaking in a German stadium, right? Um, and I've shared the stages with amazing, amazing, you know, marketers, entrepreneurs, political leaders, and so on. So, I mean, all of that just because initially I set the intention. Yeah, well, that's exactly what I was going to say. Like what I'm hearing from your sharing. Yeah. You have consciously set the intention first. Yes. The other thing that you seem to beautifully do, that you know, if people are listening and they're trying to work out how they can follow their passion and purpose and what they can do, is that you yes. then build a community around you of people interested in the same thing. Yes. Which elevates you because you're the one who's built that community. Like if we look at, you know, the same thing for me with ATL, you know, that was always my intention initially was to surround yes. myself with inspirational people and set the intention. And now, you know, we're, you know, that's how you meet, you build a community around that. Yes. And as you do that, as you know so well with ATL, and I'm, I'm eternally grateful for you, Kitty, that you've built that community because it has uplifted me in so many ways. So, you know, while we are building these communities, people benefit, they learn from us, they get inspired, they connect, they help each other. I mean, I learned so much from you. You keep inspiring me all the time, right? And as do all the other people there. So by bringing people together, you know, it, we benefit in, in the greatest ways. I mean, I'm sure it was a roller coaster experience for you, and still, I'm sure you've gained tremendous value from that too. And oh, everything else that comes along does. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So people out there listening, you know, if you're looking at following your passion and purpose, and maybe you've got an idea around a particular subject matter or potentially a business idea, you know, then, you know, that's to me, the kind of real focus is to set that intention. And then I think the other thing that's, um, so powerful about that is that you know when we realize that we're the focal point of everything that happens in our lives yes. and you set that intention and you put your all your energy towards that then actually the universe can line up to support you because you have a clear intention and actually yes. it knows how to support you whereas most people go through life not really knowing what's going on or what they want and yes. so how can the universe support you Yes, so true. And, uh, you know, of course, it all starts with finding out what you want. And that's the harder thing. Yes, it is. Once you do, as I said, building a community is a powerful thing, but also find a mentor. Yes, totally. So if you have people like, uh, you know, that really start thinking about starting a business or that really want to scale their business, connect with me because, you know, I'm happy. I'm, I'm mentoring a lot of people along the journey and mm -hmm. I don't do it one on one. I bring people together in teams so they support each other as they go along. So they help each other. And what's great is that most of the teams that we've been working with years after they started out on that journey, yeah. we are still connecting on a regular basis, like weekly or bi-weekly, over years. And that is very powerful. Yeah, absolutely. You need to surround yourself with who you want to become, don't you? Yeah. And, uh, and also having a mentor that takes you by the hand and guides you step by step. Yeah. I think it's absolutely critical and crucial. Yeah, I totally agree because obviously, you know, everybody's at different stages in their journey, you know, so by getting a mentor, they're likely to be further ahead on their journey. So, you know, I've had it recently myself. We're just working with someone who's a little bit further ahead. It can help you leapfrog 
yes. uh, and uh, achieve more in a sort of short space of time. Yes, very much, mm. very true. Thank you so much for listening to Kitty Talks. Be sure to head over to our kittytalks.com website, become a member of our exclusive club, and you'll get free interviews and access to our private Facebook group, exclusive webinars and secret success interviews. See you there.